In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to lose a pound a week, and I'm gonna do it in four little sections. So first up, I'm gonna talk about the 3,500 calorie myth, then I'll talk about what it actually takes to sustain losing a pound a week, then we'll talk about different ways of controlling calories and the importance of protecting your metabolism. Now, before we start out, I just wanna qualify myself to say I, I do actually understand what it takes to lose a pound a week, and I'm just gonna flip up a photo. This is um, what happened to me between my 35th and 36th birthday, I lost 52 pounds in 52 weeks. And this is what it looked like on me. And I understand that people are generally impatient with weight loss and everyone wants to lose faster than a pound a week. But if you can sustain weight loss, then over time, it really, really adds up. And often, it is a lot easier to lose a pound a week than it is to lose two or three pounds a week. And just to give you a further example, I did a 10 week challenge with some clients of mine um, in January this year, so kind of three years after I lost that weight, and I regained 20 pounds um, and then lost it during that challenge, and it was a pain to lose 20 pounds in 10 weeks. I can tell you, it was a real struggle because I had to be really on top of what I was eating, and I had to add a lot of exercise just to create that deficit because losing two pounds a week, that is a real struggle. So today's video, a pound a week, and then first up, we're just gonna start with this myth that I hear all the time, which isn't factually correct. Okay, first up, I just wanna explain one little myth that makes this challenge of losing a pound a week seem way too simple. And you know, this myth dates from, I think a paper in the 50s when a guy worked out that the amount of energy stored in adipose tissue was roughly 3,500 calories of stored or available energy in a pound of body fat, which is true. And then he said something like, you know, if protein is controlled and all the body weight loss comes from fat, then on typically if someone creates a 3,500 calorie deficit in a week, they should lose a pound a week, which is also true. But then he also went on to say that as time goes on, the body will adapt. And this is where people get it wrong. So people think, well, okay, if, if your total daily energy expenditure, how many calories you need is 3,000 calories a day, if you just put yourself in a 500 calorie deficit, so subtract 500, go down to 2,500, people just think that you are gonna lose fat indefinitely. So I'll get a better pen. People think that you're just gonna lose fat and lose a pound a week kind of indefinitely. You've got this 500 calorie deficit and you're just gonna drop a pound a week indefinitely. And this is really weird, right? Because think about it. If this is a 200 pound guy, that implies that you know I'm gonna lose a pound a week and you know, in 200 weeks, if four years of eating 2,500 calories a day, I will crumble to dust, which is obviously nonsense. And the reason, this is the simple reason, that your body will adapt. And very quickly, it will start adapting to weight loss. And by the end of the week, your total daily energy expenditure is likely to have dropped a little, just a little bit. When they do the modeling, it can come down 30, 40, 50 calories in a day. And you know, by after a couple of months, I'll, I'll flick up a study now, after 12 weeks, your deficit could have halved. If you've started with a 500 calorie deficit, that deficit after a couple of months could easily be down to 200 calories. And that you're, that's why you get this slowing of weight loss. And on top of that, not only does your body adapt, so your deficit creeps down here, what happens is you get more hungry. So you your energy expenditure declines and you get more hungry and it is much, much harder to sustain that weight loss. And sustaining the deficit is the absolute key to losing weight over the long run. I'm gonna talk about now what it takes to sustain losing a pound a week. Okay, next up, let's talk about what it really takes to sustain losing a pound a week. And that just basically means you need to sustain your deficit. A weekly calorie deficit is an energy shortfall between the amount of energy that you use and the amount of energy that you eat. And if you sustain a, a deficit of around 3,000 calories a week, then odds on you're gonna lose about a pound a week over a sustained period. And the reason I say 3,000 calories is that people often go on about there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat, that's true. But there's only 800 calories of stored energy in a pound of muscle, and there's no calories in, um, in water that you lose. So basically, when they do the models, um, they, they take doubly labeled water data, so they model energy expenditure, and then they model tissue from DEXA scans, and they compare it at the start and the end of really well-controlled studies. What they find is that it's typically about 2,800 calories, depending on how big someone is. So leaner people lose more muscle, bigger people lose more fat. But basically, 
If you sustain a 3000 calorie deficit, sure your weight is gonna bounce around, but over time, that is gonna be your pound a week. So 3000 calories a week. And here's what it may look like. So basically, there's gonna be some downward adjustment as you get lighter, because you get lighter, but you're also gonna have um, metabolic adaptation. So your, your leptin and your ghrelin and these hormonal signals in your body are gonna send signals to your brain, your hypothalamus, and it's gonna down-regulate your energy expenditure. So what you need to do is over time, is to maintain that 3,000 calorie deficit. So the deficit, and you know, that's not gonna be fun because you know, you're know you using less energy and you're getting more hungry. And that is the challenge. So what your challenge is over time is how do you control how many calories you put in your mouth each week? And how do you keep some upward pressure on your metabolic rate? And just to give you some rough ballpark ideas of what these numbers might be, like energy expenditure is all over the shop. I'll show you a graph now. It's a massive distribution. But for a typical woman, we could say that if she's, what would I say, about for a woman, we'd say uh, 15,000 calories a week she's expending. So like a little bit over 2,000 a week, 2,100, 2,200. And if she's eating 2,000, uh, 12,000, sorry, she's doing a great job. So the 3,000 calorie deficit is 3,000 below 15,000, which is 12,000. And for a guy, three, seven, 20, maybe 20,000 up here. So 20,000 and his deficit brings him down to 70,000. And obviously a guy can push it a bit faster, so he can have a bigger, a bigger deficit if he wants. He could have a 4,000 or a 5,000 calorie deficit. But basically that's it, and obviously as time goes on, for a woman might have to just adjust down from 1700 a day down to 16 to 15 over time and a guy might have to start up at 21 2200 and then just adjust down for his deficit days but that's just basically it and that is just a massive skill right because you're going to get hungry and your energy expenditure is going to decline and you've got to do it in an environment of hyper palatable food so it's, it's not easy and you know there are lots of things you can do to make this easier on yourself which i'm going to talk about now so when it comes to creating your weekly deficit, the primary skill you're gonna need is some form of calorie control. Now I say calorie control rather than calorie counting very deliberately because I don't count my calories. Like sometimes I do a bit of tracking now and again, but you know, you can control your calories in endless number of ways. You could do intermittent fasting. You could go on the keto diet. You could go low carb, you could go low fat, you could do paleo, you could track your calories, you could track your macros, you could, you know, you can do anything. You fix your food environment. There are so, so many ways to control calorie intake and you need to find a way that's gonna work for you. And you know, you wanna do it, you wanna create that deficit, so you need to find some clever ways that aren't a pain in the ass, frankly. So I'm just gonna talk about three kind of vague categories. So there's quantitative stuff. So for people who have absolutely no idea of what they put in their mouth, a little bit of tracking can go a very long way. So you can track your calories or you can track your macros just to get an idea that the way in these are really powerful is just to understand kind of a, a be, get a better idea of the portions that you're putting in your mouth and you know if you want to get absolutely shredded to the bone then it's probably a very good idea to start quantifying your macronutrients because frankly tracking and then controlling and adjusting macronutrients in a kind of flexible dieting pattern is the primary way that the leanest people in the world get really lean. So if you had a physique goal, you'd wanna know roughly how many calories of protein, fats, and carbohydrates you're putting in your mouth each day, and then you'd set up your deficit, and then you would make adjustments to continue this process of losing weight. So that would be a quantitative approach looking at that. But you know, quantitative approaches don't work for everyone, and there are many, many other ways to go about this. So you could do like a kind of food choices one, so you know, Paleo is restricting your food choices. Um, low carb is restricting your food choices. Low fat is restricting your food choices. Just whole, a very good, simple way to do is to say, listen, 80% of my foods, I am going to eat from whole food sources. So the, the simplest things that you wanna restrict would be added fat, refined grains, refined grains, and added sugar. And that's simply, these are just the three fundamental ingredients of junk food, which they use to engineer foods to make them hyper palatable. So junk food is just really energy dense, um, has that perfect mix of carbohydrate and fat, and it's just engineered for us to be over, overeaten. So, you know, 
you want to eat less junk foods because it's just going to make it much, much easier to control your hunger over time. And then lastly, you can also do something in terms of timing. So you could say, listen, I'm only going to eat three square meals a day. So three square meals a day, that's a timing restriction, a way to make creating your deficit easier. You could do some type of intermittent fasting where you could have a time-restricted feeding so you only eat between midday and 8 p.m. That's time-restricted feeding. People call it intermittent fasting. I'm just kind of being a bit more correct about it. Or you could do long-term fasting, which is like alternate day fasting where you actually just don't any, eat anything for a day. And you know, I don't coach that because it's a bit kind of hairy. You wouldn't do that over the internet. It's a bit challenging, but um, people do it and they have great success with it. So you can control when you eat. You can, you can control the type of foods you eat and you can take a quantity approach. And at the end of the day, People go on and on about you know the different effects on insulin and how it affects your metabolic and this and this. But primarily, if you do keto, if you do low carb, if you do paleo, if you do alternate day fasting, this and that, they are primarily calorie control tools. That they they work by creating a deficit. And whether they have any metabolic advantage to protect your met metabolism is highly debatable, and it's a fascinating debate. Frankly, it's it's really a fascinating debate. But it is very, very debatable. What they tend to be good at is controlling hunger. So if you come up with a system here that gives you really, really good hunger control in a simple way, gets you into a deficit without being very hungry and having limited cravings, that is absolutely something you wanna run with. So, you know, lots of people have super success with low carb because it just kills their sugar cravings and the cravings of foods that were causing them problems. Similarly, people can have success with low fat they have loads of success with intermittent fasting. You know, heaps of people do really well with intermittent fasting. You've just got to find a way to control your weekly calories that works for you. Okay, last up, I just want to talk about some things you can do to protect your metabolism as you lose weight. And what you need to understand is that as you lose weight, your body will adjust. And people say on average that for every uh, pound of weight you lose, there'll be kind of a 10 calorie adjustment in your energy expenditure. So basically, if you don't add any activity to your day, you can expect if you lose 50 pounds, to maintain that you'll need to, over the long run, eat 500 calories a day less to maintain that weight loss, which is a little bit depressing, but there are some things that you can do to make sure that that ad adaptation isn't as bad as it will be, and I'm just gonna talk through them now. So basically, the one with the best evidence base for this is to lift weights. As you're losing weight, you're putting downward pressure on your metabolism. The one thing that you can do to put a bit of upward pressure on your, on your basal metabolic rate is to lift weights because that'll help you maintain muscle mass and it's just going to kind of stimulate your metabolism to stop the, the breaking down process. So there's good evidence that you know this does a little bit to protect the downward regulation of your basal metabolic rate. So lifting weights is a definite one. Then the next, the biggest area of adaptation when you lose weight is your NEAT, so your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which basically means fidgeting, posture control, how many steps you take. This is really unconscious behavior. And one thing that really works to kind of sustain the deficit and keep on losing weight and protect a little bit is just to be cognizant of how many steps you're taking. And if you've got a Fitbit, just to kind of get a step count in each day and just tr try and keep on hitting your steps. And in many ways, this works better than cardio because in cardio, you just... You do your cardio, but the rest of your day, you're really sluggish. Whereas if you've got a step count, that forces you to keep on being active as you're losing the weight. Um, another thing you can do is to eat enough protein. That's, that's another kind of no-brainer that will help you stay full, and it will also just do a little bit to keep your metabolism ticking over. Not a lot, but it's worth a track. And then finally, um, cyclical dieting. There's some really solid evidence that rather than just dieting yourself into the ground, if you have breaks, diet breaks of a week or two weeks in your process, it's really going to help. And there's, in particular, there's one study where they compared kind of 16 weeks of straight dieting to 16 weeks of kind of two weeks on and two weeks off, and there was a massive difference. The intermittent approach really, really did loads better. And then lastly, some people will tell you that um, fasting protects your metabolic rate or uh, you know, keto protects your metabolic rate. or I've looked at loads of these studies and I've not found much convincing evidence for this case. So when they do the alternate day fasting, there's not much evidence that it does anything to protect metabolic rate. And in some of them, in fact, it's downward. Yes, in the first three to four days, fasting produces this non-ephedrine spike that increases metabolic rate as a kind of um, you know, survival mechanism. 
but whether that is continued in the long run is very contentious. Same with keto, same with any real, um, you know, the argument that there's any, any metabolic benefit, so any um, metabolic advantage to any particular type of diet, I've not seen the evidence. And, you know, it, it's an absolutely fascinating area of study, what you can do to protect your metabolism as you lose weight. But as we have it now, the, the areas with the best kind of um, evidence base are, you know, lift your weights, do your steps, eat your protein, and try not to diet perpetually. Try to do something intermittent because it'll just give your metabolism a little bit of boost. But uh, unfortunately, there are, there are no magic pills, and, you know, the ones that there are are quite dangerous, so don't do those. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll catch you next week. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you jump on the email list and get our five simple strategies to start losing weight cheat sheet.